Spicy ahi poke made with cubed pieces of raw tuna tossed in a creamy spicy sauce and served chilled is the perfect appetizer or side dish. A twist on a traditional Hawaiian dish, it's so simple, so stick around. Aloha my kako, my name is Rao and welcome to my kitchen where I like to share all my favorite Hawaiian and local recipes. Now, today we'll be making a traditional Hawaiian dish with not so traditional toppings. Today we'll be making spicy ahi poke. Ahi poke is a traditional Hawaiian dish and I have a recipe for the original Hawaiian style ahi poke and you can find that in the description box below or in the card up here. Also, a shoyu ahi poke which is personally one of my favorites. I'll link that below too. But today it's uh, more of a new updated way that people like to eat it. I don't know if new is a great word, but it's not traditional toppings. It's spicy, it's yummy, it's so good. So let's get started. First, you'll wanna get sushi grade poke, or ahi. Sushi grade, sashimi grade, there's no like exact science to say that, hey, if your fish is this, it's this category, if your fish is that. It's kind of the seller or the store or whoever is the one that determines that that's the grade it gets. So it's a good ballpark idea. You wanna make sure you get good fish from a trusted source, that's important. But this is grade one, grade A, ahi. And what you wanna do is make cubes, poke, chop, cut into cubes. So that's what this ahi is. It's kind of thick. So what I'll do is cut it down a little. Fish, you'll want long single strokes. You don't want to saw because it'll really break up the fish. And this is such a nice fish. You don't want to do that. Um, you might not have to do this with yours if it's not as thick as mine, but single stroke. And if it doesn't go all the way through, you just put your knife back in and finish that cut in the same groove there. See how it's not tearing it up so much? Pressure and single stroke through. Pressure and single stroke until you get all the way through. And that's about the thickness. If you like really thick poke cubes, you totally can do that. And this one, eh, we'll probably go like this. If you do go one forward and then it's one full one back, but as long as you're not like, then that's not so bad. That wasn't even a, si a sound effect for cutting. I don't know what that was. One forward, one full pull back. But see how you can start to get this to, this happens if you start to saw. So try your best to do long single strokes. We'll cut this maybe into thirds like that. And then I like to just go right back through that same cut we just made earlier. Now we got a few stacks going and then all you have to do is cut it up like this. Bite-sized pieces, not too big. See when you push, okay, I'll show you also. When you push down like you would normally cut things, this is what starts to happen. You see how it kind of frays like that? You don't want that. I mean, it's okay, but it's not pretty, right? So same concept. You see how I kind of went like that on the last one? So for this, if you go long single strokes, it'll be a whole lot better. And part of it is because we're cutting across it, but pressure and pull. Or you could even go pressure and forward and then pressure and back and finish because the knife is going to sit in that groove. Forward, back in the same groove, push as you get to the end and you get your cubes like this. Perfect bite-sized pieces. Mind you, I'm not a chef. I, I'm not a fish or <laughs> a fisherman. Um, I don't cut, break down fish all the time. So I'm sure there's much better cutting techniques than mine. But I am a mom, I do like to cook, and if I can do it, you can do it too, right? Okay, so cubed up, good. We can set that into a bowl while we make the sauce. So go ahead and put that in. Let me just rinse off my hands real quick and I'll be right back. All right, now wash my hands and we're gonna make the seasoning for this. First, you're gonna need some mayo. I like to use Kewpie mayo. It's a Japanese style mayo. It's a little bit, I would say sweet is the word, but it definitely packs a little bit more umami. You can use regular best food mayo too, no problem. I love that. But that will go in first. And this is like the base that gives it that almost creamy consistency. And then you can use any chili sauce or chili flake or whatever you want. I just like to use sriracha, it works really well. And you'll add that in. Now, this is 
spicy, but not super spicy. I'm, my spice tolerance is terrible. I think, <laughs> I think black pepper is spicy. Don't laugh, don't at me. So baby steps to getting to here. <laughs> You'll also want to add some shoyu. Shoyu is Japanese style soy sauce. And you can find that in the Asian aisle at most grocery stores. If not, you can pick it up on Amazon or any of those other places. And sesame oil. Sesame oil is a strong flavor, so you don't wanna add too much of it. Um, you can find that in the same Asian aisle as well. And then you'll wanna mix this up. Raw fish was a large part of Hawaiian's diets back in the day, and it still is today. Poke, sashimi, and seafood in general. You know, a lot of the dishes included a lot of that. So it's gonna come into a, like, a consistency like this. And that's perfect. So what you wanna do, and totally up to you, if this is too much for you, you don't have to use the whole thing. I try not to pour the whole thing in at once to make sure I don't put too much in there. So into the poke or the ahi. Yeah, you can call it poke at this point if you want. Um, you'll just take a spoonful of this and drizzle it over. I like to put about half first and see where it's at. You don't want it too soupy, you know, like to have all of that on it. And then all you have to do is toss the fish in it. And it's pretty well coated at this point. Um, if you want more, by all means, you can. And when you stir, you don't want to like jab your um, mixing spoon or whatever. I use a spoon. A fork tends to um, stick into the fish. But you'll want to just kind of use the edge of the bowl to help you. So you'll slide your spoon around and push it into the middle and flip. Turn the bowl, push and flip. And that way you're not like breaking up those beautiful cuts of fish that you just made. And then of course, a little bit of green onion. Everything is great with green onion. So for me, I don't tend to use this part. If you wanna use that lower part, you totally can. This gets, usually how I do it is just wrap it in a wet paper towel and sit it in a mason jar on the um, windowsill. But you can totally dunk it into the garden and have your own for next time. How I like to do it is just thin slice uh, slices like this. And you just run your knife down. You can be fancy and cut it at an angle, but for me, usually I just run it like this. You can stack them on each other if you want, like that, and run the knife. For me, it's just getting those thin, thin slices. Sometimes what can happen is they kind of stick together like this, which is totally fine. You can just kind of pull them apart. Green onions, you could use scallions. You could use red onion, I guess, if you wanted, but green onion is my favorite. And this is just a few. This was just like three stalks, right? Happens to me all the time where I, the, the very last one doesn't really cut through. And then see, you know, add more. Start with less, I guess I should say, because you can always add more, right? And then the green onion, just sprinkle on top. You can add um, some sesame seeds into this if you really wanted to. Sometimes I like to add unagi sauce over the top but generally the spicy ahi like this is kind of how I like it. Like I said, add some sesame seeds and that's totally okay. And it'll look like this. So, oh, don't lose it. Super, super yummy and it packs in some good flavor. If you love Hawaiian recipes and you want to see more, then check out this video here. And until next time, ahui ho! watching my mommy's video.